At number 10 is the earthquake in Japan on New Year's Day. Mere hours into the new year, Nostradamus's first prophecy for 2024 came true. His prediction for 2024 begins with the oracle writing, quote, The dry earth will become more parched and there will be a great flood. Now we'll address the first part of that prophecy in just a moment because the psychic's followers have surmised that Nostradamus was referring to the 7.5 magnitude tremor that hit Japan's western coast mere hours into the new year which claimed 48 lives and leveled buildings, and in the process generating tsunamis. These waves engulfed the coast and swept homes and cars into the sea, forcing residents to seek higher ground. So not only did his prediction for great floods in 2024 come true immediately, but the oracle also managed to sneak in a long-term prediction in the same sentence. You see, most have speculated that his dry earth hypothesis is definitely in reference to the climate crisis we find ourselves in. 2023 was the hottest year in recent human history, and experts hypothesize that 2024 is going to be even hotter, with even more droughts and fires than last year. We're only one entry in, and the dude's already got two predictions right, so let's see what else 2024 has in store for us, according to Nostradamus. At number 9 is World War 3. One of his predictions talks about a new world war starting 79 years after World War 2. Now, people are trying to connect the dots between what Nostradamus said and the current and very tense situations across the globe. Take Ukraine, for example, with all that back and forth conflict there. Then there's the whole tension between China and Taiwan, plus the ongoing struggles in Palestine. At this point, it's very possible that any one of these wars could escalate into something much worse on a scale that we haven't seen in nearly 80 years. And as for whether or not this will come into fruition, we're just gonna have to wait and see. If you're enjoying the video so far, please support the channel by pressing like, subscribing to Most Amazing, and ringing that notification bell. At number 8, Famine and the Pandemic. Nostradamus's prediction about a quote, very great famine through prestiferous wave, end quote, sure sparks curiosity to say the least. Now, first off, how might this famine happen? Well, think about it. A prestiferous wave, if I'm pronouncing that right, might not just mean a disease, but it could also mean like a swarm of pests attacking crops or disrupting food supplies. Climate change could also play a part, causing extreme weather that messes up farming, leading to food shortages. Imagine a situation in which crops fail due to devastating pet infestation or changing climate patterns. Now, this could hit hard as food prices skyrocket and some places could struggle to get enough to eat. The effects might ripple worldwide, causing instability, conflicts over resources, and economic chaos. Now remember, these predictions are like reading tea leaves, which is open to many interpretations, so while it's good to be aware, let's take these prophecies with a pinch of skepticism. At number 7, Prince Harry becomes king. One of his prophecies is making people do a double take lately, especially those eyeing the British monarchy. So there's this passage in his book hinting at the, quote, hinting at a king of the isles facing a forced exit. Now, many people are drawing a line between that prediction and King Charles III. See, if Nostradamus wasn't cooking up poetic riddles, it seems like there's trouble brewing for the new ruler. Now, while some have taken that to signify the torch being passed from the late Queen Elizabeth to the now King Charles, that wouldn't explain the whole driven out by force bit. So some are speculating that King Charles is to be dethroned. But by who, exactly? Well, the prophecy throws in a twist, saying that this ruler would be usurped by, quote, one who will have no mark of a king. So basically a new leader that won't have the usual kingly vibes or isn't inherently the heir to the throne. Now, Prince William is next in line for the crown, but according to Nostradamus, that might not stick. Cue Prince Harry, the spare in the royal deck, potentially becoming the king. This actually goes down. It's gonna be like a plot straight out of a Netflix series. Brace yourselves for a royal roller coaster, because the drama is far from over. At number six, the celestial fire on the royal edifice. Many people all over the internet are corroborating this with the line about the dethroned king, speculating that the reign of the British Empire under the new king's rule will all go up in flames. But this passage might not necessarily be about the British royals, despite everybody jumping to that conclusion. Some folks mean it could be any non-democratic power structure, or even just a metaphorical fire, not an actual blaze at Buckingham Palace or anything. Now people are getting super hyped saying that this is the end of the world, but honestly, it's taking a lot of guesswork here. Who knows what Nostradamus Thomas is really talking about. It's like reading an old text message without emojis. Or any context leaving it totally open to interpretation. At number 5 is the death of Pope Francis. So Nostradamus had some very spooky predictions about 2024 and one of them involves the Pope. He talked about a very old Pope shuffling off this moral coil and then a seasoned Roman taking over. Now that's got people thinking, especially because Pope Francis, who is about to turn 87, hasn't been feeling too chipper lately. I mean the guy had to skip a major climate conference 
conference due to his lung issues. Now the thing with Nostradamus is that his predictions are like deciphering riddles, so there's always room for interpretation. It's not like a crystal ball that gives you a clear picture. But still, when it comes to talking about the Pope and his health, it really makes you take notice. Now let's not hit the panic button just yet, maybe Nostradamus was having an off day or reading the stars upside down. So here's the hoping that Pope Francis sticks around for a good while and proves those predictions wrong. After all, a bit of good health practices and a sprinkle of optimism might just dodge these gloomy forecasts. At number 4 is the Pope's replacement. So the passage for this one reads, Through the death of the very old pontiff, a Roman of good age will be elected. Now we've already dissected the first bit, how our good and old Pope Francis is going to kick the bucket this year. But Nostradamus throws in a curveball. He says this new and fresh Pope will, quote, weaken his see. Now what does this really mean? Some think that this new Pope is going to be shaking things up in the church, maybe bringing new ideas or changing the rules. Now the prophet of doom probably would have seen this as a bad thing, but in this new day and age, maybe it's not all doom and gloom. Perhaps that's his way of saying that this new pope will be someone who introduces new and progressive changes and introduces the church to rules to fit neater in the present age. Now, if you were a fundamentalist or biblical literalist, that might sound like dreadful news, but for the rest of us, eh, it doesn't sound too bad. It's like getting a religious software update. At number three, the naval war against China. Nostradamus predicted a combat and naval battle and said that, quote, a red adversary will become pale with fear, putting the great ocean in dread. Super cryptic. So if this one comes true, then the world is gonna end this year, no doubt. Like, we're all in for nuclear Armageddon, so let's hope it was wrong about this one, yeah? This prediction talks about a big big war involving what people assume to be China. He said something about battles, especially naval ones, and how a red adversary would get scared and make the ocean all nervous. Now lots of folks have different ideas about what this passage means. Some say it's about China getting into a huge fight with other countries, potentially when they try to reclaim Taiwan for its resources, though that would inevitably drag in the West as well. World War III anyone? Now this passage is still super vague, others just think it's old words being twisted to fit what's happening now. At number two is the Antichrist. This prediction is by far one of the most way out there predictions in the whole book, and if it's correct, in the biblical Armageddon is literally going to happen this year. The passage goes like this, quote, The Antichrist very soon annihilates the three. 27 years his war will last. The unbelievers are dead, captive, and exiled, with blood, human bodies, water, and red hail covering the earth." End quote. Now this could mean that this year marks the beginning of the end, but here's the thing. Nostradamus is kind of like the Da Vinci Code of his time. His writings are super open to interpretation. Like the line about the Antichrist very soon annihilates the three. Some people think that the three could be the three big powers, maybe the Holy Trinity, thus signifying the end of organized religion or something along those lines. Or maybe it's something else entirely. And who knows? That bit about blood, bodies, water, and red hail covering the earth? Yeah. Sounds like either the dude's been reading the Apocalypse of John before bed every night, or maybe he needs a cup of something to steady his nerves. For all we know, this could be a cryptic message of some sort, like trying to solve a riddle without the answer key. Now people are freaking out about these predictions, some might even try to connect events to what Nostradamus said, like a cosmic detective, but the predictions here are as clear as mud. So instead of sweating the maybes, let's just keep our cool and see how things play out. And at number one are his most vague predictions. What's spooky about Nostradamus' predictions is their utter vagueness. Take this line for example, the sloping park great commodity through the lands of the west and Lombardy, the fire in the ship, plague and captivity, Mercury and Sagittarius, Saturn fading. What the heck? It sounds like a cryptic horoscope. There's a reference to a park, a fire, a disease, some planets. Could it mean a fire in a theme park while Saturn's rings disappear or maybe a metaphorical firestorm in the western world due to political conflicts? People have been trying to interpret these passages for centuries, finding connections to major events after after the fact, but taking them as solid predictions for the end of the world is a different story. Predictions are intriguing, but until the celestial fire comes knocking, it's a guessing game and an eerie puzzle. We're going to be starting things off with the collapsing of the internet. Now obviously Nostradamus lived a very long time ago, he did not literally come out and say to everybody, like, the internet will crumble before thee in the year of our lord of 2024, and everyone just be staring at him blankly like, what? What are you talking, what is the internet? What are you on about, Grandpa? You should not be allowed to live on your own. Back to the home. This uh, you know, obviously made it more of a vague prediction that people have looked into, and some would say severely overanalyzed, but uh, it's fun to talk about this stuff, so deal with it. As for 
why the internet could collapse in the very near future. Uh, tons of possibilities. We're watching the rise of AI right now, which a lot of people are seeing as a very real threat to humanity. So could AI actually become intelligent enough to take over the internet, then become sentient enough to realize just how harmful it could be to us and decide to like, just shut itself off? Who knows, right? It's, it's possible. If that happened, we'd be pretty screwed. Uh, we've kind of grown to rely pretty heavily on the World Wide Web. Next on the list, we have a rise of a deadly virus or disease. Ain't that a word that makes you want to puke? Ever since the whole 2020 pandemic, illnesses, diseases, they've been on the forefront of a lot of people's minds. And luckily, things didn't go as badly as some people were saying they could. But what if there's something far worse looming on the horizon? Yeah, what if? I always hate when people say stuff like that. Oh, well, it could be always something worse, you never know. We could all be screwed. It's like, all right, what am I supposed to do about it? I'm not a doctor. I'm just a whatever the heck I am doing right now. Anyway, just don't shoot the messenger, folks. I'm just saying that there are a lot of predictions of mass virus or disease that could wipe us out. And will it happen? I don't know, just wash your hands. Let's, let's discuss my preferred way to go out, that being with an alien invasion. This is another one of those predictions or I'm kind of like, how have aliens been pulled out of this ancient dead man's predictions? Earthquakes, famine, disease, those are very biblical catastrophes. Aliens, a little more contemporary, but you know, this dude was apparently a wizard. So he was seeing stuff he couldn't even fathom. That's how cool Nostradamus was. Nostradamus, more like Nostradam us. And by damn, I mean damn us, literally, because he had a lot of negative stuff to say, apparently. Was this dude ever positive about anything? Anyways, aliens, they've been in the news a lot lately. We got sightings happening all over the world. The US government is having big meetings about them. They're really causing a stir. So could 2024 be the year they finally make their big debut on Earth, uh, and then punch us all to death. It's possible, and yeah, I hope this is the way we all go out. I don't wanna die getting hit by an asteroid, because then it's just like lights out instantly. You don't really get to like do anything. I don't wanna get sick from some gross illness, because that's gross. I wanna die with an alien probe shoved into me with a futuristic rifle in my hand on a hill of like dead alien body parts that I've severed in battle, and that's, that's, that's a man's way to go out right there. All right, speaking of asteroids, we have the asteroid impact. Now, one of the Oracle of Doom's more ambiguous predictions for 2024 includes something he quite vaguely describes as a celestial wave of death from the heavens to smite the Earth and all its inhabitants. Now, unless God himself decides to start zapping lightning, something more probable and grounded in reality, which could explain this death from above scenario, could be an asteroid smashing into Earth. Yeah, a big old rock from space hurling towards us and bam! catastrophic impact. See, there's loads of these asteroids cruising near Earth, and despite all of our eyes pointed towards the skies, we simply can't spot them all. As a matter of fact, scientists can only detect a fraction of the rocks in space, because our current systems for spotting incoming objects rely on a bunch of factors lining up perfectly. Things like the direction the object is coming from compared to the sun, what the weather is like, and even what phase the moon is in. And guess what? Because of all these factors, the success rate for spotting these things is great, around like 1%. And here's the kicker, it's even worse when it comes to spotting smaller objects. So basically, it's like trying to find a needle in a cosmic haystack, and most of the time we're just not that good at it. Imagine if one of these rocks decides to take a pit stop on our planet without sending so much as a postcard first. Bam! Catastrophe! Mustardamus might not have been a scientist, but his predictions about this kind of stuff are spooky when you really think about it. So yeah, keep an eye on the sky, because you never know when an uninvited cosmic rock might crash our party. Alright, next up, we have a massive earthquake. How fun. Old Nostradamus made a prediction that later in 2024, a horrendous earthquake will hit Japan. In fact, a cataclysmic earthquake. This will be said to prompt a massive tsunami that will of course cause even more widespread destruction. An even bigger earthquake is said to hit the United States, affecting the western area of the country. It will apparently be so powerful that it will be felt in other parts of the world. So not great news, and I say, I say news again, these are very vague predictions, folks. Emphasis on the prediction part. So take it with a grain of salt. I think most of our American and, and Japanese audience is gonna live through the year just fine, depending, of course, on your age and other factors 
Not related to earthquakes, of course. Next up is cosmic death from above. Backtracking to my point from earlier, rocks in space isn't the only thing that could explain this celestial death from above. As a matter of fact, one explanation that might fit better with Nostradamus' predictions is a cosmic ray, either a beam emitted from a distant supernova or a gamma ray burst. The end of the world could come about as the result of a nearby star exploding or shooting a gamma ray burst our way. Now, now, cosmic events like these aren't exactly uncommon, and a cosmic beam hitting our planet from such a distance would need to be a shot so precise that it would make the American sniper blush. So what's the big deal? Well, in the extremely unlikely scenario where one of these rays does come down and hit us, it'll be like someone tearing off the Earth's sunscreen, that's our ozone layer, and exposing us to some serious cosmic rays. So imagine our atmosphere gets zapped and radiation starts like pouring in. That's bad news for life as we know it. The radiation could mess up ecosystems, fry electronics, and cause a mass extinction event. So, while Nostradamus was kind of cryptic with his predictions, this one's a doozy if it happens. It'd be a cosmic disaster of nightmarish proportions. Yeah, now heavenly lightning strikes doesn't sound so bad anymore, does it? All right, the next way we might all meet our doom in 2024 is from a super volcanic eruption. Now, volcanoes are scary for multiple reasons. First, there's the lava. Even, uh, even kids know how scary lava is. Do you ever play The Floor is Lava? I mean, you play that game knowing that if you touch the floor, you're not just gonna lose the game. You gotta pretend that you're dead. Yeah, if you play it right. So, we got lava, big volcano erupts, everyone around it gets engulfed in lava, and then they burn to death. Great for them, but I know what you're thinking. How could a volcano destroy the entire planet? I mean, there's no volcano big enough to spew enough lava to destroy us all. Like, where is this Ron Jeremy volcano you speak of? Well, folks, it's not just the lava you gotta worry about, it's the ash. Now, I know we've messed around a lot during this list so far, but Volcanic ash has been known to cause exceptionally cold stretches, some lasting possibly hundreds and hundreds of years. Take the Little Ice Age, which occurred between the 14th and 19th centuries, where it was exceptionally cold throughout most of Europe. This is believed to have been caused by a high number of volcanic eruptions that spewed out sun-blocking particles into the atmosphere. It's, uh, it's a thing. Look it up. Speaking of which, we have global freezing up next. Remember the premise of the movie Snowpiercer, where in order to combat global warming, the United Nations releases a chemical that actually triggers an ice age? That's basically uh, what this prediction was all about in a nutshell. Now, it wasn't spelled out like that uh, so clearly. Again, he wasn't exactly like, hey folks, like get your mittens ready, because it's gonna get chilly. Uh, but some folks have taken his writings and correlated it to real science, concluding if there's a big spike in this stuff called aerosol in the air, it could cool things down massively. Allow me to explain. Aerosols are chemical compounds that can come from lots of places, like natural stuff like dust, sea spray, or even particles of volcanoes when they erupt. However, these occurrences, except for the volcanoes, aren't quite enough to induce climate change. However, human activities also produce aerosols. Things like burning fossil fuels, like coal, oil, and gas, industrial processes, and even some sprays that we use, like hairspray or spray paint, releases aerosols into the air. And if those cooling particles hang around for a while and accumulate, it might just kickstart an ice age, turning the thermostat way down, but like, for the entire planet. So whether the next ice age comes as a result of aerosols or uh, God forbid nuclear winter, don't pawn away your winter jackets and mittens just yet. Next up, let's lighten the mood a little bit with something that could be good. Not too good, because uh, this is an end of the world list after all. Uh, so this could also be bad, uh, but we'll explain. Old Nostradamus predicted that the rise of medicine and technology will cause humans to live longer, possibly up to 150 or even two centuries old. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Think of all the stuff you could do in a lifetime if you could live that long, AJ. Yeah, plus I don't want to die. I hate talking about the world ending. This list makes me quite unhappy. As much as we don't want to do it, we got to look at the dark side of this prediction. You can probably guess where we're going to go with this. More people living longer and longer could put a strain on 
well, just about everything. Not just natural resources, but jobs. Think of the jobs. There are already more people on the planet than there are jobs. What the hell are all these 165 year old people gonna be doing? You know, lounging around, ordering mimosas, while all the hot young 80 year olds like rush around, serving their every whim? Or on the flip side, will all the young people be out of work while the high paying hard to get to positions are hoarded by the old guard? Good spell disaster. Nostradamus also predicted that a man-made super weapon would annihilate all the inhabitants of Earth, predicting the production of the thermonuclear bomb. But as you've seen, only half that prediction has come true. What if 2024 is finally the year that the latter half of his prediction comes true, that being the end of all humanity via this device? Global nuclear conflict leading to a full-scale nuclear war could result in devastating consequences, including widespread destruction, nuclear winter, and long-term environmental hazards, potentially rendering the planet uninhabitable for humans and many other species. Now, for as much as I want to believe that this isn't gonna happen, the fact is humans haven't gotten any more peaceful. Right now, there's the war in Ukraine, the whole tension between China and Taiwan, not to mention the ongoing struggles in Palestine. At this point, it's very possible that any of these wars could escalate into something much worse on a scale that we haven't seen since the nukes were first dropped. I really hope Nostradamus was wrong with this one, but either way, I'm gonna go build a bunker somewhere just in case. Yeah, me too. I hope I'm invited. Believe it or not, this dude from over 500 years ago actually predicted the rise and takeover of artificial intelligence. Now, many Nostradamus prophecies require you to read in between the lines a bit, seeing as the dude was attempting to describe things that would happen centuries later. Like imagine trying to describe AI without even knowing what a computer is. But given the context of AI, his prediction becomes a whole lot less cryptic. In his passage, the prophet of doom describes how humans play God, attempting to create a being in our own image, one made not of flesh. He goes on to say that this unholy son of man will surpass its creators in all things, wielding an unseen influence which shall usurp the mantle of governments from their makers, casting a shadow on the destiny of humanity. Now listen to that passage again and just try to tell me that he's not talking about freaking artificial intelligence. Like, it's pretty incredible. Next up, we have an encounter with a rogue black hole. Black holes are incredibly mysterious and fascinating, but from a distance, right? If one happened to show up anywhere near us, we'd pretty much be helpless. They gobble up everything that comes too close, even light itself. So what if Earth got a bit too cozy with one? It's not a pleasant picture. First off, a black hole's gravity is crazy strong. It just pulls everything in. And once you're in, there's no coming back. At least that's what seems to happen. We really don't know where things end up when they get sucked in. Now, the real chaos happens before we actually get sucked in, though. As we get closer to a black hole, the gravitational forces start messing with everything. Tides would go bonkers, weather patterns would be completely out of whack, everything would be in complete chaos. Then Earth would start getting stretched like spaghetti, and once we pass the point of no return, we just, we'd be gone. We have yet to develop anti-black hole gravitational pull technology. Next up, we have seismic activity in sinkholes. Now, we already discussed crazy things like huge earthquakes in part one of this series. Definitely check that one out if you haven't already. But one detail I neglected to mention was how he described the very ground beneath our feet swallowing everything up with entire nations plummeting down into the pits of the abyss. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, that sounds a lot like he's describing sinkholes on a scale we've never seen before. Now, sinkholes appear spontaneously in nature because underground, there are layers of rock and soil, and sometimes these layers can dissolve or get worn away by water. Imagine like a big rock candy getting smaller as you lick it. That's basically what's going on underneath us. When water seeps through the ground, it can dissolve certain types of rock, like limestone, and over time, this makes spaces and gaps underground. And if there's a lot of water, or if the ground above gets really heavy, those spaces can collapse, causing a sinkhole. Sometimes even human activities like mining, drilling, or heavy construction can mess with the underground and trigger sinkholes. Now imagine massive sinkholes opening up suddenly, consuming entire cities. Yeah, not just tiny gaps in the road here. What if they were monstrous, devouring entire countries even? I mean, how could a sinkhole of these proportions happen? Well, you may have heard that recently, Finland built an entire underground city 
city, and Elon Musk plans to drill tunnels under Los Angeles for highways. Perhaps these man-made projects could fail, sending the entire city above into freefall. Okay, maybe not a nation-sized sinkhole, but still unfathomably huge. 2024 is also supposed to see an extreme power shift in Europe, and this extreme and sudden shift could spell disaster. Of course, these predictions are always vague, so it's not like there were any particular names used, but it is hinted at that a major political leader will be taken out by someone in his very own country. This will then lead to a big political shift that will affect the entire continent. And based on the title of this video, you could probably imagine that this power shift wouldn't be positive. Try a total collapse of the economy that will lead to many Europeans becoming displaced. So I'm not sure how many European viewers we have, but it looks like in the coming months, there may be a lot less of you because you'll be too poor to afford the internet anymore. And some of you may have to actually sell your computers for bread and water and you'll be one of, the, one of those long lines where everyone's crying, oh, I'm hungry. I'm sorry, That's, don't shoot the messenger. This is just what I've heard. Next up, cybernetic enhancements are the mark of the beast. Back in the day, folks were all about spirituality. So what was highest was spiritual in heaven and what was lowest had to be the material realm. Now one of his predictions had to do with humans sacrificing what's highest, aka our spirituality, in favor of what's lowest, the material. Now at first glance, you might think that he's trying to describe humanity's gradual disconnect with faith in favor of materialism as we've seemed to replace God with Gucci. But read a little deeper and he may not just be talking about vanity. He describes a process in which mankind actually integrates itself with the material, sacrificing spirituality itself for a perceived strength. He said that those who did not receive the mark of the material blasphemy would simply not be able to compete with his fellow man. Now the way I interpret it, personally it sounds to me like he's attempting to describe cybernetics. Kind of like how Elon Musk is developing Neuralink, which is basically a computer chip that puts the tech of your phone in your brain. I mean, just think about it. If I got a calculator in my noggin, I could totally outperform all of y'all in anything, at least academically speaking, so it translates really well. As a matter of fact, pretty soon you might be able to transplant my entire head onto a lab-grown athlete bod, so... I mean, that's pretty exciting. Next on the list, we have the bird virus. So we talked about the potential for a world-ending virus uh, to rear its ugly head in the coming year for human beings, but what if there was one that started spreading across another part of the food chain? Birds play a pretty important role in the ecosystem. Uh, they help control pests, they spread seeds around, and without birds, what would bird watchers do with their lives? So if a nasty virus hits our flying friends and starts wiping them out. This would set off a chain reaction throughout the entire food chain, which of course goes all the way up to us. And most importantly, if the bird population drops, there'd be so many bugs, the birdies, they wouldn't be around to keep them in check, right? And birds eat plants, and that could mess with our crops and gardens. Less birds also means less seed spreading action, and that could also mess with the growth of plants. And let's not forget about the whole predator prey thing. Birds have their own set of predators, like hawks or cats. Hawks are birds, so I don't know why I included that in there. But if bird numbers drop, it could throw off the balance, and some of those predators might start disrupting other parts of the ecosystem in search of food. Next up, escaping the Earth. Now, Nostradamus predicted that by this year, the only ones who would be saved from the Earth's doomed fate would be the kings in cahoots with the devil, who has bestowed upon him the means to literally sprout wings and escape into the heavens. I mean, these are all metaphors, so we're not literally going Icarus mode. But you guys at home probably came to the same conclusion as I did with this one. As I'm sure this dude is talking about how the rich and powerful are planning on being shuttled off to Mars or a luxurious moon base or some space station far out there where they can sip on their cocktails and watch as the world unravels on account of the mess they created. Jeez, Elon Musk actually ties into a lot of these. It really makes you wonder. Apparently we may just experience the worst solar flare in history in 2024. So let's all pretend the sun's surface is like a pot of boiling water. Well, with boiling water, occasionally a bunch of steam kind of bursts out. Well, that's what we call a solar flare, folks. These solar flares can be pretty serious business. When the sun decides to flare up, 
It spews a bunch of energy and particles into space. If Earth happens to be in the way, it can mess with our stuff, especially anything electronic. Sometimes these flares are no big deal and we just get a bit of a light show up there, but if a really big one comes our way, it can mess with satellites, power grids, and communication systems. If the impact is bad enough, it could lead to economic issues. Imagine a world without the internet power and all the tech we've come to depend on. That could cause some serious problems, not just in our daily lives, but also for businesses and entire economies. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the Megalodon, and bear with me here. In the same passage about how humanity will create suns in our image to usurp us, he also talks about humanity wielding magic to give rise to the beasts of the past to devour us. Super bleak, but again, this is the prophet of doom we're talking about here. So how can this one be interpreted with the hindsight of the present, and how the heck does it relate to megalodons, you ask? Well, I'm sure you've all heard by now that scientists are attempting to use genetics to revive an ancient species that our ancestors drove to extinction. Yeah, not, not the megalodon, but by this year, we will have hit the undo button on the woolly mammoth, which is impressive but not exactly a world-ending species. However, once we do succeed in reviving the mammoth, the possibilities for bringing back other extinct creatures are endless. Jurassic Park, anyone? I've seen enough of those movies to know that bringing back the dinosaurs is a terrible, terrible idea. But it seems like the march of progress thanks to science, or magic as Nostradamus might have been trying to describe it, would undoubtedly attempt to bring back these demons if they could. And we're gonna finish off the list we're probably the biggest, quite frankly, the most plausible threat of anything on this list, the reptilian threat. So in part two, we discuss the threat of an alien invasion, but another interpretation on that is that the threat of attack from other beings may not come from above, but from below the surface of the Earth in the form of reptilian creatures. You've probably heard of this conspiracy theory before, that reptilian shapeshifters live among us already, taking on the form of celebrities and prominent political figures, seeping their way into our society, controlling us from the shadows. Well, perhaps in 2024, that's the year they make their big move, shedding their humanoid disguises as the rest of their reptilian underlings ascend from the cavernous depths to enact a worldwide invasion. Yeah, those sinkholes we mentioned earlier, that's where the reptilian horror start like springing up from. That change in power over in Europe, that's, that's the reptilian king rising to rule and enslave the people of the continent. And it all happens during the biggest solar flare in history so that all of our technology just like conks out as the reptilian beasts descend upon us. It's gonna be quite the year, folks, so strap in. The biblical flood is coming. It was said to be caused by seemingly endless torrents of rain so powerful that it literally left no mountain above the surface, submerging every single continent and turning the entire planet into one huge ocean. In the book of Genesis, this flood was sent out by God because the big man upstairs was so depleased with how the human race turned out that he decided to essentially annihilate everyone and everything, save for Noah, his family, and and two of every species of animals. So if you ever dreamed of sailing or living out your best pirate life, then according to Nostradamus, the time has come this year. AJ's point leads me to another possible scenario. This biblical sized flood could send us into a water world scenario. And that would really be a nightmare. Out of all the cool movie worlds I'd want to live in, water world, very low on that list. I actually think it's kind of a cool movie, but it's not amazing or anything. And certainly not a world I'd want to live in. For one thing, I'd be seasick the entire time. I like a nice cruise on a boat, but uh, I could not do it 24 seven. And in this situation, so much of humanity would have already perished. Now what's left of us would be floating around on makeshift rafts or stranded on top of skyscrapers, surrounded by water. And just like in Waterworld, there'd be rowdy bandits on jet skis pillaging and plundering their way across the sea. If you're enjoying the video so far, you can support the channel by pressing like, subscribing, and ringing that notification bell. Next up, let's talk about how Nostradamus predicted that the sky is falling. Now, I'm not sure if this particular prophecy is meant to be taken literally or is some sort of metaphor or something like that, but in one of Nostradamus' passages, he describes how the moon, yes, the literal moon, will fall out of the sky, out of orbit, and collide 
with Earth. I have no idea how this could be interpreted, so I'm just going to take it at face value here. Now, the moon is locked in orbit and wouldn't be able to collide with Earth on its own. It would need a ginormous force, like way bigger than anything we've ever seen, in order to shove the moon out of its orbit like some kind of celestial event with absurd amounts of power. Now, coincidentally, NASA recently rediscovered a 54 million ton asteroid that will make its way past Earth in October of this year. Now, NASA has said that there's a 1 in 11.5 million chance of this asteroid colliding with Earth, so the odds of that happening are quite slim. But with that being said, if this asteroid misses the Earth and hits the moon instead, the impact of the moon smashing into Earth would be like the ultimate doomsday scenario. And like a cosmic game of dominoes would actually lead to a lot of his other predictions coming true. Picture an explosion so massive it makes the most enormous volcanic eruption seem like a tiny little The energy released would shake the planet to its core, causing seismic waves that would make earthquakes look like child's play. And the sky? Just forget about it. A cloud of debris would shoot up, blocking out the sun and plunging us into darkness. But wait! It gets worse. The aftermath would be a global nightmare. The Earth's crust would crack and heave, triggering mega tsunamis that would drown coastlines. And the sky-high dust would mess up our climate big time, leading to a deep freeze or a scorching heat wave, making it nearly impossible for life to survive on Earth. All right, I'm going to piggyback off AJ's point once again to discuss the aftermath of this falling sky scenario in greater detail. So one possible scenario, of course, is that the Earth experiences this massive heat wave with the land left completely scorched. It's hard to believe that anyone would survive all of that, but let's just say there were some stragglers. The last remnants of humanity aimlessly wandering through the wasteland in some sort of Mad Max scenario. Lips cracked, mouths dry, barely any water left in their bodies, dreaming of the days where their bottoms were damp with perspiration. Sounds like a real nightmare. But if they did manage to survive, to begin building a new society in the scorched desert sands coating the entire planet, who then would rise? Well, this would be the exact opposite of our water world scenario. Here, liquid would be the planet's greatest commodity. Roaming bands of mutated bandits would scour the sands, crushing anyone with precious water who stood in their path. Next up, let's talk about the Devourer of Worlds. Now, if you thought these predictions were absolutely insane, you haven't seen nothing yet. In part two of this series, James touched on how Nostradamus predicted that beings from other planets, yeah, that's right, aliens, would wage war against Earth. But apparently, these aliens are going to be the least of our problems. You see, later on in that same passage, Nostradamus described a celestial being, not unlike God himself, who will come down upon the Earth and devour devour all that remains of our wrecked planet, literally consuming the entire freaking world. Now, it seems like these aliens are just the heralds of doom in this scenario. Maybe they were just attempting to warn us about this impending doom, but our simple monkey brains just start attacking, all the while a literal planet eater slowly but surely approaches Earth to consume it. And it won't just be Earth either. Apparently, this being is so massive that it will swallow up all of the planets in the entire solar system, including the sun itself leaving behind a void of darkness as it carves its way through the Milky Way. Honestly, this sounds like where Stan Lee got his inspiration for the Marvel villain Galactus. Like, Nostradamus might have been onto something, right? Or maybe, just maybe, this is the cosmic force that's said to push the moon into Earth. How crazy would it be if Galactus himself was the first domino to kickstart the end of the world? Probably not, but... We're just going to have to wait and see. And where will we end up if a Galactus-type entity consumes us? I mean, sure, we might just cease to exist or get crushed in some sort of dark void, but what if this Galactus situation is something more like the black hole we discussed in part three? What if we end up far out into the middle of space in some nightmarish realm uh, surrounded on all sides by aggressive alien fleets immediately demanding to know what we're doing in their solar system? Sure, the world wouldn't have ended, but we'd be in an entirely different kind of nightmare. Aliens start descending upon our planet, shoving their blasters in our faces, grilling us with questions through their advanced universal translators. What creatures are you? You invade our solar system? No, we've been transported here by a large unknown entity in a 
purple spacesuit. We've been trying desperately to return home. It's basically Star Trek. Because that's the world I want to live in, not, not Water World. Next up, let's talk zombies. In the previous part of the series, James mentioned how Nostradamus predicted a plague spread by birds, or as some of you in the comments like to describe them, government spies. Now, a few predictions later, Nostradamus goes on to explain how human beings will go insane with rage and devour one another. If we put two and two together here, we can surmise that birds will be the one to pass this virus onto humans, which will have some sort of mad cow disease effect on human beings, leading to a literal zombie outbreak. Now, if you've been keeping up with the news recently, there's actually a bird flu going around right now that has been called a highly pathogenic avian influenza, which is wiping out bird populations and even other species of animals across the globe. Now, perhaps it's this virus that mutates into something much worse that causes this terrifying zombie scenario. Or it could be something totally different, like the Last of Us type of fungus that drives humans mad. I mean, Nostradamus doesn't usually dive into the details, but in any case, mass human hysteria and eating one another really does not sound like a good time. All right, this horrifying idea of humans eating one another could also be interpreted in another way. What if it's not necessarily us literally eating each other, but the technology we've created eating us. Now, we've talked about AI being our downfall in this series, but what about VR specifically? I tried VR for the first time a couple months back, and I gotta say, if I had it in my home, I'd be on there far more than I'd like to admit. It is pretty cool, and you know the technology is only going to improve. A VR game so advanced, so immersive, could draw us in so deeply that the lines between reality and fiction begin to blur, or maybe we just no longer care about the real world because we can throw on a pair of goggles and live in a world where we fly around on Falcor from the never ending story shooting at Klingons with Robocop's Auto 9 pistol. Like, hmm, should I spend my day doing that? Or should I go to my cousin's funeral? I only met her like once, I barely even knew her. I don't think the family would care. You know what, I have a date with Lara Croft at three. I'd better just stay right where I am. You could see from my incredibly realistic scenario that VR may become so easy to get lost in that our minds literally become consumed by it. Next, let's talk Planet of the Apes. So Nostradamus' predictions actually extend beyond the tragic and apparently horrifically violent end of humanity. According to the Prophet of doom. When it's all said and done, humanity will have successors that will dominate what remains of Earth long after we're gone. But it won't be reptilian lizard people. Thank God. Actually, our successors will be a lot closer to us on the evolutionary tree. Apes. Yeah, that's right. It seems like Pierre Boulle took a page out of the Nostradamus Doomsday playbook. If you've seen any of the Planet of the Apes movies or read the book, you'll know that these hyper-intelligent primates can be basically just as cruel as humans. So it seems like even in the event when all of us are wiped out, there will always be monkeys running the Earth. You know, on second thought, Maybe we should give the reptiles a try. All right, maybe our successors won't be reptilians or apes at all, though. Maybe the future is fish. We mentioned a massive size flood at the very start of this list, followed by a water world scenario. Well, it's very logical to assume, then, that if this is the direction Earth went, the creatures of the sea would become more abundant and possibly even evolve into a new form of intelligent life. Or perhaps the remnants of humanity would evolve to become more fish-like, like take Kevin Cosner in Waterworld. He had gills and he could breathe underwater. He was a fish mutant. It happened in that movie, so it's gotta be true. Number seven, Trump 2024. One prophecy that has recently garnered attention is the potential return of Donald Trump to the highest office in the United States in the 2024 presidential election. While Nostradamus' cryptic verses do not explicitly mention Trump, some interpreters suggest that it hints that he will be back. He said, when the white dragon returns, America will be in chaos again. He will divide the nation and will bring conflict and violence. The great power will be weakened and the world will be in danger. Only the brave and the wise will be able to stop the white dragon. Nostradamus' foresight seems to suggest that Trump's second term, if it indeed occurs, will be filled by a series of scandals and controversies. It's said these revelations could cut deep into the fabric of the nation, furthering dividing the American people and tarnishing Trump's reputation. Accusations of corruption, misconduct, or financial improperity may arise, leading to calls for his impeachment or resignation. Number six. 
China will rule the world. China has rapidly expanded its economy and military strength over the past few decades, which will likely continue. As the world becomes more interconnected and globalized, China's economic and cultural influence is spreading rapidly, with the country already being the world's second largest economy. In Nostradamus' prediction, China will continue to rise and eventually overtake the United States as the dominant global power. Now, this shift could lead to significant changes in the world order, with China setting the international trade, diplomacy, and security agenda. Whether this rise will be peaceful or lead to tensions and conflict with other nations remains as he said, the empire of the great city will not want to consent to the crooked actions of the great leopard. His forces united by the east will cause him to confront a red adversary. Now, this is open to interpretation, but some believe the great city could reference the United States and that the great leopard could represent China. Number six, artificial organs. In Nostromus' prediction, a breakthrough will occur in artificial organs, leading to the development of advanced and affordable artificial organs that can be widely used to save lives. This breakthrough could involve a new method of producing artificial organs, such as 3D printing or discovering new materials more compatible with the human body. As a result of this breakthrough, patients with failing organs will have access to life-saving treatments that were previously unavailable or overly expensive. This could significantly increase lifespans and a reduction in the overall disease burden worldwide. From artifice of man, new life shall spring, as organs born of machine shall take wing, their metal hearts shall beat with human fire, and save the dying from death's cruel desire. Now honestly, I hope this comes true. My dad had a kidney transplant over 10 years ago, and it saved his life, so I hope other families can experience the joy of seeing someone they love get better. Number 5. Will Putin rise or fall? Nostradamus predicted that Putin's leadership will face a major test in 2024, the Year of the Dragon. Now, the dragon is a powerful symbol in Chinese astrology associated with strength, transformation, and change. As someone born in the Year of the Dragon, Putin may face opportunities and challenges during this year. On one hand, the dragon's influence could bring positive changes to Putin's leadership, such as increased strength, confidence, and the ability to take bold actions. However, the dragon is also known for being unpredictable and prone to sudden shifts, which could challenge Putin's leadership. In the prediction, Putin's leadership will be tested in various ways, such as economic or political crises, opposition from within or outside Russia, or personal struggles. Now, the question remains whether Putin will rise to the challenge and emerge more robust, or whether he will fall under the weight of these challenges. The year of the great seventh number accomplished, it will appear at a time of the games of slaughter, not far from the great millennial age where the buried will go out from their tombs. Mm -hmm.